Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to another edition of Crimes of the Week. Before we get to today's video, we wanted to announce that Crime Zone's official Patreon page is now live. In addition to ad-free videos and other extras, patrons will also get access to weekly bonus videos for our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International series. So if you want even more Crime Zone content, head over to patreon.com slash crimezone for exclusive cases not featured in today's video. Authorities in the city of South Euclid, Ohio, say that they have arrested a 25-year-old woman this week following a bizarre assault case that took place in a local Walmart. Police say the incident unfolded in the potato chip aisle of the store on Tuesday when Monika Garner spotted 36-year-old Precious Jackson. After trying and failing to remove Jackson's mask so she could spit on her, Gardner reached into Jackson's cart, pulled out a 10-pound packaged log of ground beef, and proceeded to beat Jackson in the face with it several times. Both women were accompanied by their young children at the time of the assault. Garner apparently has a history of violent behavior, and at the time of the incident, Jackson had a protective order against her. When Garner was arrested, she reportedly tried to explain her actions by saying she thought the protective order was no longer in effect. She has since been charged with assault and violation of a protection order. A South Carolina woman is lucky to be alive this week after she allegedly crashed a stolen vehicle full of gas she was hoarding and the whole thing went up in flames. According to the Pickens County Sheriff's Office, the incident took place on Thursday night when a deputy tried to pull over a Pontiac G6 after learning that the car had been reported stolen. However, as the officer activated his siren and lights, the driver, 28-year-old Jessica Patterson, accelerated, trying to escape. The chase didn't last long, though. Soon after Patterson attempted to speed off, she crashed, the vehicle rolled over, and multiple explosions could be heard inside before it burst into flames. Patterson managed to escape the wreck, but was on fire, and was tackled to the ground by the deputy in an attempt to put out the flames. Before being put into an ambulance, Patterson reportedly admitted to police at the scene that she had several containers of gasoline in the back of the stolen car, which she had bought to hoard. News of the strange incident comes as South Carolina, as well as several other states in the Southeast, continue to experience gas shortages caused by the recent hack of the Colonial Pipeline, forcing it to temporarily shut down. The crisis caused a wave of panic buying and hoarding of gasoline amongst consumers, despite pleas from state and federal officials not to engage in these activities, as many people have not been storing the fuel they're buying safely. Patterson was taken to the hospital following the incident. However, the extent of her injuries have not been reported. Charges against her also have yet to be announced. Authorities in Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office say that a New Jersey police officer has been arrested this week after he was allegedly found to be operating a meth lab out of his home. According to reports, 50-year-old Christopher Walls was arrested on Sunday following a visit to his house the previous night because of a domestic disturbance. While officers were at the house, someone apparently tipped them off to the illicit activities going on there, and a search of the basement and shed on the property revealed ingredients and equipment for making methamphetamine. Books about making meth, explosives, and poison were also allegedly found in Walls' possession, as well as a cache of dangerously unsecured firearms and ammunition. Walls is reportedly a 19-year veteran of the Long Branch Police Department, something the prosecutor Christopher Gramaccioni referred to as particularly distressing following his arrest. Walls is now facing six charges related to meth production, as well as firearm possession during a controlled substance offense, and a second-degree child endangerment charge owing to the unsecured weapons in the home that were accessible to a minor living in the house. If convicted of all charges, Walls could be looking at up to 60 years in prison. This week, representatives from the Dallas Police Department announced the discovery and identification of the body of a 55-year-old man who had been missing since last October. According to reports, the remains of James Allen White, an executive for the global accounting firm KPMG, were found in a wooded area near Paul Quinn College by a survey crew at approximately 12.30 p.m. on Thursday. The identity of the remains were confirmed by the Dallas County Medical Examiner's Office the next day. 
Prior to the discovery, White had last been seen on October 22, 2020, when he was captured on surveillance camera at a gas station shortly after he finished his workout at an LA fitness in the uptown area of Dallas. He was still dressed in his workout clothes. A few days after his disappearance, his black 2020 Porsche McCann was found in South Dallas. This was less than a mile away from where his remains were discovered this week. At the time of this recording, authorities have not released the cause or manner of White's death, but several family members say that they believe foul play was involved. This week, California Highway Patrol announced that they had arrested a man following a dangerous stunt in which he sat in the back seat of his Tesla while it drove on autopilot mode with no one in the driver's seat. According to the Highway Patrol, they received multiple calls about a driverless car on Monday evening traveling east on Interstate 80 across the San Francisco-Oakland Bridge towards Oakland. They tracked down the vehicle in question and signaled the car's occupant, 25-year-old Param Sharma, to pull over. Sharma was arrested at the scene and charged with two counts of reckless driving and disobeying a police officer. However, the story didn't end there. It turned out that this was far from the first time Sharma had pulled a stunt like this, and not even the first time he had been cited by California Highway Patrol. On April 27th, he was cited for similar behavior, and in 2015 was also charged with reckless driving. Additionally, he had taken several videos of himself from the car's back seat while it was operating in autopilot mode, which he had posted to social media. The latest video was reportedly filmed the day of Sharma's release from jail on Tuesday, in which he turned the camera toward a tablet displaying a news story about himself. In at least one of the posts, he also bragged about his vehicle, his purported wealth, and the stunt saying, quote, You blue-collar peasants can't understand my life. At the current time, it is unclear what repercussions Sharma will be facing, as his arrest and prior run-ins with the law have obviously not deterred his behavior. Authorities in Miami-Dade County say that they have arrested a 28-year-old woman this week after she allegedly went to a local high school posing as a teenager to promote her Instagram account. The bizarre incident reportedly unfolded on Monday morning when Audrey Francis Sweeney showed up at American Senior High School close to the city of Hialeah and began to roam the halls, handing out flyers promoting her Instagram account. She dressed like a student to blend in and pass the security at the front of the school allegedly carrying with her a backpack and a skateboard. When she was eventually approached by security, she claimed that she was a student looking for the registration office, but then continued to hand out flyers and attempted to get people to follow her on Instagram. Students who witnessed the bizarre stunt also reported seeing Francis Sweeney wearing a mask and filming strange things in the building. When security notified the school administration about a potential threat on the campus, Francis Sweeney ran away. She was arrested later that night at her home in North Miami Beach and has subsequently been charged with felony trespassing, misdemeanor interfering with a school, and resisting arrest without violence. At a bond hearing on Tuesday, Francis Queenie was ordered to stay away from the high school. British Columbia RCMP Major Crimes Unit say that they are currently investigating a suspected double homicide case after the bodies of two brothers from Kamloops were discovered early this week. According to reports, the remains of 31-year-old Carlo Fryer and 29-year-old Eric Fryer were found by hikers shortly after 10 a.m. on Monday on Naramata Creek Forest Service Road near the city of Penticton. On Sunday, it was reported that family members had confirmed the identities of both men. So far, police have remained largely secretive about the case. Neither man's cause of death has been released, and investigators have said only that the killings appear to be targeted. A vehicle that was found nearby has also been seized by police and is currently undergoing forensic analysis. While no suspects have been named, the RCMP say that they are seeking to identify two suspicious men that were seen running across vineyards and orchards in the area around the time the bodies were discovered. Police say they do not believe the men are involved in the case, but would like to speak with the men to eliminate them from the investigation. The RCMP are currently asking the public to come forward with any information they might have about the case and to report anything odd or suspicious they may have seen in the area. The family, who are reportedly shocked and devastated by the sudden loss of Carlo and Eric, say they have no idea what happened and have been mostly left in the dark about the investigation.
Authorities in the city of Birmingham, Alabama, say that three people are dead and four police officers are injured, following two separate incidents that allegedly began with a dispute over a dog. The incident started at approximately 6.30 a.m. on Sunday, when Birmingham police were called to Brother Brian Park after a reported shooting. When they arrived, they found two victims, one male and one female, who had been shot. The pair were apparently in a romantic relationship. The man, who was found on a sidewalk, was pronounced dead at the scene. The woman, who was rushed to hospital with a gunshot wound to the head, was pronounced dead a few hours after her arrival. Witnesses said that the couple had a dog with them, and on that morning had been approached by a man wearing a red shirt and overalls. A verbal altercation had broken out between the couple and the man, reportedly about their dog, and had escalated to the point where the suspect had shot both victims before taking off. Statements from witnesses and video surveillance from nearby businesses reportedly led police to the Stratford Apartments on 18th Street, where the suspect supposedly lived. However, when the SWAT team arrived to serve the man a warrant shortly after 1 p.m., they were immediately met with gunfire. Four officers were injured in the ensuing firefight, two of whom were hit and two of whom were grazed by bullets. The suspect, meanwhile, was shot and killed. At the time of this recording, neither the names of the victims nor the suspected shooter have been released. It is said that all of the officers injured in the second shooting are expected to recover. It is unclear if the dog that was the subject of the dispute has been found. That's it for this edition of Crimes of the Week. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. Thank you for watching.